Hello everybody, Nick here again at Scog and Dickey. We appreciate you stopping by for another one of our weekly tech videos. Now don't be fooled, this might be the LS2 that I'm currently working on in my personal shop where we're currently at. Today's tech video though, we're going back to the Gen 1 style small block and specifically marine engines. Now we get this phone call I bet three times a week, where somebody calls up, and most likely it's the Vortex style crate engine, you know, the 96 to 98 half ton 350 roller cam, Vortex heads, one piece rear main seal, real solid engines, really great. They want to buy one and put it in their boat. And we educate the customer over the phone that that is not a good idea and for many reasons, and many of them are very confused. So this video here is to explain why we don't recommend that. Now. It's a free country, you can buy and do whatever you want. Believe me, we have had customers that have done it. I have personally known some people that have done it. It's definitely not recommended though. And that's why we're here, to recommend that while you can buy an engine for us and put it in a boat, these are automotive applications and there are some big differences. So let's talk about those differences. Again, I am gonna be covering the Vortex style engine because They've been using those in boats for the past 20 years and they still offer that crate engine. And that's usually the case. Somebody went to our website and they found for three grand or so, you can get a brand new, not reman, brand new, Vortec 350 crate engine. Then they go to a place that sells marine specific engines. It looks exactly like that and they want another couple grand. You think these guys are just trying to pull a fast one on you, make a couple bucks. There actually are some differences in the reason for that price increase. So let's go over it here. One of the big ones, of course, because you're running water through the coolant system, not coolant, of course there are brass freeze plugs and other things in those coolant passages that cannot be the standard materials. One of the ones nobody thinks of is the head gasket. Yes, this is a Felpro marine specific gasket. They make a marine specific gasket for a reason. It's not another reason to make two bucks extra off of you. These are made out of a special material. Some of the marine engine builders out there even go a step further and use a gasket that on the coolant ports actually has another stainless steel ring on it. So you get double the protection from what you're essentially running is straight lake water, or even worse, seawater, which is a lot harder on a coolant system. Along with that, there's valve train upgrades inside of these engines. It isn't just the standard truck camshaft. They do have a different profile on it. It's not anything too radical, we all know that, but it is the power band that you need in a boat. It's also what, if you have a fuel injected boat, which most of them are these days, the program in that computer is designed to run with that camshaft, not the truck camshaft. So there's another thing there. There's also difference in valve springs. The rest of the valve train isn't just stock truck stuff either. They actually do a little bit of upgrade on that too. Think about it, when you're going down the lake, you might be at 3,500 RPMs constantly for quite some time. It's not something you'd usually do in a truck, so they do a little bit of extra beefing up on certain aspects to make it live. One of those things is the exhaust valve. It is a different kind of exhaust valve and a different seat that's been hardened in the head, and that kind of helps too. Think about it. You're pumping out a lot of extra heat. A lot of that heat is going through the exhaust. You gotta make sure to handle that, so that's another point they try to save from failure. They also do the same thing with the timing set or timing chain, it's a little beefier too. And one of the bigger ones I learned about, and I'll be honest, even I didn't think about this, but we contacted places that build marine engines, some that actually take a GM engine and convert it for marine use, as well as Blueprint engines. Blueprint is a company that makes crate engines, we sell them on our website. They are actually the only ones that make a marine engine that we sell. We do not sell a GM marine engine. We are not a boat or marine dealer for engines or powertrain parts, so we can't get them. But they make one themselves, and they also explained all the same stuff I told you here and one more. Think about the piston to wall clearance inside of an engine. You know, when you're setting up a piston inside of a bore, what's the gap at room temperature? It's different for cast or hyper eutectic or forged. It's also different for a marine engine. I didn't think about this, but it makes a lot of sense. When you're going down the lake, again, you could be doing 3000 RPM for 30 minutes straight, depending on how big the lake is. You have a piston that is getting just as hot as it does in a truck, maybe even just a hair hotter because of that. That piston's gonna expand, but the cylinder is not gonna expand near as much because the coolant temperature. 
think about it. A truck runs at 195 degrees as a thermostat, right? What does a boat run at? 130 degrees? 140 degrees? It's different. So the cylinder does not expand as much as the piston. So they actually take the cylinder bore and another few thousands bigger. I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but the thing is over the life of an engine, that does matter. If your cylinder is that much more snug and it stays that much more snug and your piston grows with that heat, you might end up kind of wearing this thing out a little bit sooner. And to be honest, after talking to some marine engine dealers, that seems to be the common point in all this. When they buy that truck Vortec 350, they put it in their boat, it only lasts a few years. It finally falls apart. That is if they winterize it, it lasts that long. That's probably why you're watching this. You didn't winterize your boat and the block cracked. You're trying to find a cheap engine. We understand, we get it. But they fail because all this stuff wore out or broke because it was being abused in a boat when it wasn't made to be in a boat. And when the guys build a boat engine, they'll last years, sometimes the life of a boat. And that does mean a big difference. Three grand or so for a truck engine every few years, or is it five to 5,500 for a marine engine that you might never have to replace again. It might be perfectly good when you sell it on to the next guy. So that's something to keep in mind when you are shopping our website and you're looking for some of these parts. Not all these parts are the same and not all the parts that come in crate engines are the same. We do appreciate you stopping by for another one of our weekly tech videos. We know that, again, we don't sell marine engines here at Skog and Dickey, but we also know that this is a big topic and it confuses a lot of people. So give us a like, a subscribe, and a share. Share this information with your friends. Maybe educate them a little bit on what the big deal is with all this. And we will see you next week for another weekly tech video. Thanks for stopping by.